at the end of the day, like, you know, the, the, the person that's on probation or parole has to be willing to want to make changes. Um, and there are many cases that it might be the second, third, fourth time through the criminal justice system um, before we start to see some buy-in from the person that's on probation or parole. And you were looking at my rap sheet and you would think, well, certainly they came and said, Chad, you need to go to rehab. Chad, you need help. Never, not once for like 10 years, not once. And this last time I had completely, oh, what I realized when I went in is I said, I am so comfortable right now in my jail cell. Like. 30 minutes after I got to jail, I said, there's something wrong with me. Like, there's something wrong with me. Like, this isn't normal. And I said, I want something different. There are lots of options. The, the problem is some of those options aren't as broadcast and, and aren't as available. And you kind of have to know where to go to get those resources. And sometimes that, you know, it's very overwhelming if you're, especially when you're coming out of the prison system to have a lot thrown on your plate of things that you have to do to, for requirements with the adult probation office, but then also trying to get your own counseling set up and in place. And it's, you're kind of left hanging at times. And, you know, a lot of the things that we've been talking about over the last seven years within the county are agencies trying to work together on a higher level and trying to provide those warm handoffs, so to speak, to, to help individuals once they're out of the prison system to get the resources that they need. If an individual does not resolve within themselves that they have a problem and they want to change that problem, then no one will be, no matter how close you are to them, will be able to change that person. If you can look forward to having something, then, you know, your, uh, your approach is different, you know. So if, if they know that these resources is available, then their approach, the, the, the way they conduct themselves leading up to it could be, uh, you know, more beneficial so that when they get to the resource, they're able to capitalize. Um, but a lot of guys come home and they don't have any support. One of the things that we try to help them learn is to change their thinking and that's that negative self-talk that they kind of that they've used and it probably gotten them into trouble in the first place. one is housing, right? So once people are released, where do they go? Um, and, you know, obviously having a criminal record hinders their ability to, to live in certain places. Landlords are oftentimes resistant to rent to somebody with a criminal record. Family members, there may, there may have been bridges burned, and so family members don't want to necessarily have somebody uh, living with them. Um, employment is a huge barrier um, for a lot of the same reasons, people not wanting to hire somebody with a criminal record. Um, other issues are substance abuse and untreated mental health issues. Um, so a lot of people are struggling with a lot of different issues um, that oftentimes they're not getting treatment for. And so that obviously hinders their ability to get a job and, or be successful in lots of different ways. And so um, there are these very specific issues, but then as we know, people are oftentimes dealing with a lot of them at once. And so just feeling kind of very overwhelming um, in terms of all of the different things um, that are going on in their lives. And then other sort of just more basic issues are things like, where's your identification, right? So people who have incarcerated or have gone in and out of the criminal justice system lose, you know, their kind of personal records. And so, you know, do they have a form of identification? Where's their social security card, a birth certificate? Um, you know, how are they going to get transportation uh, to and from a job? Um, you know, if they have children reunifying with their kids or dealing with childcare issues. So um, there's a multiple uh, multitude of issues that people are dealing with 
Um, but then oftentimes you have individuals who are dealing with a lot at once and, and maybe perhaps don't have the coping mechanisms um, to, to be able to kind of handle it all effectively. And so it's just an overwhelming kind of feeling, particularly right when you're released. Each and every one of us um, are planting seeds. So I've been doing this type of work for 20 years. Um, 14 of them had to do with um, teens, adolescents, and, and their families. Um, and many of them um, didn't feel themselves that they wanted to change. However, I would see them um, in recent years and they would tell me, I continued to hear your voice and it, it drove me to want to change. And they would tell me all the things that happened. So I may not have seen the immediate result, but it was a seed that planted and eventually it started to grow within them. I asked myself like, what, what can you do next? You know, what can you do next? And, and you know, for me, I wanted to, to, to make sure that my, my next move was, you know, towards redemption.